All right, guys, welcome to the Street Parking Podcast. My name is Julian Alcaraz. And I am Miranda Alcaraz. And on this episode, Julian and I are going to share our five tips for staying on track with your fitness while traveling. We just got back from a trip to Cabo San Lucas, Mexico. Mm. Um, super vacation status for us. One of our first vacation in three years. And we're talking about ways we could share with you guys how to uh, stay on track. Not that we stayed completely on track. We'll talk about that in a minute. Yeah, I mean, we've been traveling for, I mean, you've been traveling for years already. But even now with me and you traveling, like I've learned to pick up on a lot of things that have, has prepped me every time we go on our trip. That helps both me and you as well, which is good. Yeah, so we went to Mexico on this trip. Our last vacation was three years ago. Vacation, we've traveled a lot, like yeah. he was saying. Um, even since street parking has started, we've been all over the place for meetups and camp and uh, garage gym makeovers and all of this stuff. Um, we've moved and everything. Um, but this was our first vacation together, just the two of us, in three years, since before I even found out I was pregnant with Knox. Yeah, it's been a while. Um, I really enjoyed this vacation, to be honest. Um, How did you spend the vacation? Give the people an insight to Julian on vacation. Well, uh, this was the most relaxed <laughs> I have felt. It was a surprise to even me to see Julian so go long. this route. Well, we, we had a conversation about it on our trip, how I told you I felt, I feel like my ADD, right? All my jitteriness and always feel like I need to do something is kind of gone. And I actually took this opportunity of silence and just so all this peacefulness around us to listen to some audiobooks that have educated me in like money management. And I was like so zoned in. Like I'm not kidding. At like 10 o'clock, 11 o'clock, even later at night, one of the nights, he was like... <laughs> <laughs> had his headphones in and was like taking notes in a notebook about this like investing stuff and I was like I was like the complete opposite side of the coin because I'm usually like I have a hard time turning my brain off at home and just relaxing and I went into over the top relax mode and was watching like episodes of Bachelor in Paradise while he was learning <laughs> about <laughs> investing so um I mean, you were into it. I was really into it. Um, there was even a moment, too, where I know you were finishing off a book as well that you were yes. reading on, like, other businesses. And you just like to really uh, understand stories of other businesses because it can help us with ours, actually. Um, and there was a moment where we were both, we were just kind of zoned in on our, on our books. And I was like, this is really cool, actually. We were at a super fancy place that had um, an infinity pool like in our room that's mm -hmm. how fancy this was it was like over the top and at least i put on my swimsuit and listened to the book in the infinity pool i hate the heat i stayed in <laughs> i stayed inside the room the whole time and i was fine looking outside of the glass doors and just looking at the ocean i was like i know where i'm at i don't need to feel the elements outside because I, I i mean i get nice. burnt i get so dark and i'm just uncomfortable the humidity makes me so uncomfortable it. yeah yeah so but we also took advantage of the nighttime at being at the beach, because so, that was the best time. We yeah. did some walks uh, on the beach at night, and that was I like that. That was very peaceful. Yeah, so we were at a nice resort, and as far as our desire to stay super on top of the fitness, I would say it's our lifestyle, so we don't th overthink it too much. Mm -hmm. Like, we didn't go into it, like, worried that we were going to fall off track, because that's just not who we are. Yeah. Um, but we only worked out twice, Tuesday and Thursday. Three times. Tuesday, Thursday. Tuesday, Thursday. Well, because we did, there was, oh, was that me that only did, did the Tabatas? You didn't do anything that day? Oh, yeah. I did the hour-long yoga. Yeah. So you, so we did something active three yeah, times. Yeah, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. So Tuesday, we actually went to the hotel gym right. and worked out. And then Wednesday, I did an hour-long yoga session, a street parking maintenance session. I think it was the 60-minute vinyasa. Mm -hmm. um, that I did, and then on Thursday we went back to down to the hotel gym, which, by the way, they had like this whole back, um, like functional fitness room with like assault bikes and everything because uh, a good friend of mine and acquaintance slash friend of yours, Jason Kalipa, 
is I guess frequents this place. Yeah. And he's the most um, persuasive person that I know, and <laughs> clearly made the hotel build him a special room for when he comes. So yeah, it was really nice. It was nice. He told us about it, and we went in there. The cool thing about it is that day one, there was like the structure of the workout for street parking, but we totally adjusted to what was around us and what was realistic in that environment, right? Because we didn't know that that room, the functional fitness we room was available was there, in the yeah. back. So I know that day was like the every two minutes for 20 minutes, you do a 200 meter run followed by one round of Cindy, which is five pull-ups, 10 um, push-ups, 15 air squats. But we just knew one, we didn't have a timer and we didn't want to pull out our cell phones to capture the time either. So what we ended up doing, well, like you ended up modifying to how you were feeling. And I remember taking that workout and just doing 10 rounds total. Mm -hmm. of, we didn't time it, yeah. Of a 200 meter, they have like this little air runner kind of uh, It was treadmill, a really was nice. nice hotel gym. And then I did like, I didn't have a pull up bar around me. So I just did, I think like five bent over rows one side, five bent over rows the other side, and then 10 push ups, 15 squats. And I was just kind of let, the motions happen. I'd get done with that station. I'd go immediately into the run. And that to me was really good. Like I got a good 15 minute long workout in and that was it. I didn't really yeah. bother me that I moved outside of the template that was given. No. So let, let's take that and get into the tips. I now have a sixth tip that this was not one of my tips, but I'll start with this since you were just talking about it. The very first thing that you need to do and just prepare yourself for when you're planning on working out in a hotel gym is that you're going to make everyone else in there feel uncomfortable if yeah. you actually go in there and work hard um, because they're small and usually people just sit on the like little bike and they're watching TV or whatever. Um, and you just got to own it. Yeah, I mean, we've absolutely. cleared out so many hotel gyms at this point when we go in there and start doing burpees or devil press or whatever. So I would say not on my official five tips I was going to give, but for sure a tip is just like, let it go. Just go in there and just ignore, you know, if people are looking at you weird or whatever. And yeah, I got to say to piggyback on that, it's just minding your own business, right? Like know that you're going to make people uncomfortable. And if sometimes <laughs> they say something or they give you looks again, it's just all a matter of minding your own business and just being respectful of their space as well, uh, of, of their space as well. You don't want to just be the a-hole that goes no, in there yeah. and like, you know, just have proper gym etiquette and know that the workouts that we usually do sometimes requires a little bit of space moving around based off of what the workout is. And that's okay. Right. Just be mindful of other people and, mind your own business okay that's a good tip thank you mm -hmm. not an official tip okay so uh do you have five i'll start with my one which kind of starts off okay. from before leaving and hopping on the plane two of them actually are you gonna steal my tip that i told you about the I, other day i don't think so okay i don't think so so tip number one for me is try to pack as light as possible mm -hmm. and by doing so for me i like to i always like to have a pair of i've moved away from like the crossfit looking shoe that screams i crossfit and because they're hideous <laughs> so bad into something and uncomfortable and uncomfortable into something that one you know you could use to work out in and also two you can walk out casually and just rock those shoes and be like oh that's a cool shoe so that kind of does it's like a two for one you can wear it it's super comfortable you can go to the airport you you know be on the plane travel with it and you can actually wear the same shoe for when it comes to working out so what that's, shoes did you have? What, what so shoes for me, did I fit that bill for you? A, uh, a pair of Burks, a pair of flip flops, some my workout slash travel shoes, and one pair of dress shoes. Because you know that your pair of travel slash workout shoes is going to be outside of your suitcase, and then your flip flops take up very little space. Your Burks take up very little space. So in reality, your dress shoes are probably going to take up the most amount of space. So that's my tip number one: is just pack appropriately and um, also when it comes to like work, take more workout clothes than actual dress clothes because it's more comfortable and you can lounge in it and also work out in it. So obviously that tip works a lot better for men than women because Correct. we end up taking like 17 pairs of shoes no matter what. Yeah. But I will say kind of to piggyback off of that and this um, is just adding to your tip. Don't think you need to be wearing shoes to work out. So ladies, I don't want like to hear these complaints of like, oh, I didn't pack my tennis shoes. That's fine. If you work out in your hotel room, 
you actually don't really need the shoes. So you can still get some stuff done even if you don't have room for your shoes. Um, you can still you can still be active for sure. Okay, my first official tip was um, actually this goes perfect with what I just said. Don't be too set on doing your workout or your fitness inside of a gym setting. So I've been to I'm not even exaggerating hundreds of hotels in the last decade. Um, and there I've been to hotels that don't have a hotel gym. I've been to a hotels that their hotel gym is like two elliptical trainers and nothing yeah. else. Um, or it might be super crowded or it might be under construction or whatever. Um, there's plenty of stuff that you can do either in your room. I mean, so many of our body weight workouts you can just do right there in your room or you can use your backpack or I've used a backpack as a weight before you can step up and down we see our members doing it all the time on the coffee table or the ottoman or just doing burpees and lunges you've seen me do that a bunch of times um something else that uh we used to do a lot of times on the seminar staff is we would do stuff or we just did this actually in Utah the workout that we did on the stairs yes we were we didn't we were not lazy enough, but didn't want to take the time to go all the way down to where the gym was when we were recently in Utah. And so, and the stairs were right by our room. So we did a workout that was like, run up two flights of stairs, do 10 push push-ups, run up two flights of stairs, do 15 air squats. And just like kept repeating that for a certain number of rounds, or you can do it as an AMRAP. And so there's so much that you can do because as soon as you're like, oh, this hotel doesn't have a gym, I guess I'm just not gonna work out on this trip. Or, oh, like the gym's always so crowded here. I guess I'm just not gonna work out on this trip. That's a really easy like out for people that um, we just ruined, so. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> as well, I, uh, yeah. I mean, one of the workouts that I did was actually in yeah, that's right. on our balcony and I thought that was perfect to be honest. What it, did you do? Tell them what you did. I did Tabata air squats and then immediately into Tabata push-ups. You looked super jacked at dinner too. Uh, thank you. So Tabata, for those that don't know, is four minutes. You do 20 seconds as many squats as you can and then rest for 10 seconds. Repeat that for four minutes and then you did it with push-ups afterwards. You can never go wrong with something like that. And no. it's just like so quick and it's to the point and that goes off of no, don't worry about taking shoes as well. Yeah, you were just out there in like your like Lulu shorts, no mm -hmm. shirt on and yep. crushing it. Yeah, I think I was asleep at that point. <laughs> uh, okay. My travel tip number, number two. Number two travel tip. So my travel tip number two is going to be on food, actually. Oof, okay. Because um, a lot of the times people will put that last and then you get to the airport. And you know when you travel, airport food is the worst. You know and who's the worst at this? Jaime, sitting right there behind the camera. Oh man. He makes no plans or preparation for food when we travel. Yeah, so air, airport food is the worst in my opinion, right? And it's just how it's prepped in general. And the only thing you can actually rely on is maybe like some trail mix, some clean trail mix and some jerky, which even that, depending on how long the flight is, can get extremely exhausted, exhausting. So my tip for this is prepare yourself in advance go to whole foods go to a trader joe's go to something your local supermarket get stuff that you know that you'll be able to eat when you travel and on top of that pack yourself at least two to three meals for your travel tip so you know that you don't have to go to a restaurant you can you know keep things super clean super simple put it in a tupperware and take it in a lunch pail and yes you can take that through security not liquids but you can take solid foods through security so not only do you have your carry-on bag but you can have your lunch pail with you and they will not quite it's the worst they do is they check it but usually if it's just food they won't and now you have yourself some food and snacks for your travel tip, which I'm gonna add to that, for us, right, this doesn't have to apply to anyone. We also like to be prepared and take our little MCT oil packets oh, that yeah. Bubs gives us, because we like to use that to put that in our coffee. It's like our way to stay away from creamer, and because some places have really nasty black coffee. So by taking MCT single serves, that really helps us out a lot, and also the single serve progenics packets, mm -hmm. that also, helps us out a lot when we travel um, because we can just literally make our shakes or and have our, pro our coffee prepared. So being as prepared as possible to like you do in your personal life, try to apply that to your travel life and then you're gonna feel so much better on day one of travel. Yeah, because even if you're planning on like going a little off the rails once you're like at your resort or whatever, the last thing you wanna do is feel crappy when you get there because you ate food in the airport that 
it wasn't really like a cheat meal because it's not n- nothing that you get in the airport is super tasty. You just kind of like wasted a day of eating crappy where. Um, yeah. And I'll add on top of that, too, just with the amount of like really long travel days that I've done is I hear people say all the time, like, oh, when I travel, I don't drink any water because I don't want to have to get up to go to the bathroom. Oh, that's the worst. You, that is the recipe for feeling so terrible for like the next two days. I just crush water, like even yeah. double what I normally drink. And I try to book my aisle seat so that I can get up whenever I want. But I've crawled over some sleeping people. I don't care. But I've seen people on like eight plus hour flights not get up one time that's horrible. That's and they'll just good. like hammer like a couple of those little like mini wine bottles and then fall asleep who knows what <sighs> pills they took but those people are not going to feel good we also understand that if you have kids it's a little bit harder to get that preparation in beforehand but again these are tips to try to make your travel trips feel a lot better so it's up to you if you're going to apply them or not right like we still apply this till this day even with if we travel with Knox or without Knox. Mm-hmm. um so Again, don't feel the pressure to do so. Again, this is just our tips as to what we do because we've traveled so much and this is what helps us feel pretty good and a successful travel day. Yeah, and uh, I know on the templates even, Molly has put some bars on there that are like, you wouldn't want to eat those all the time when you're at home, but like if you're traveling or in a pinch, there are great bars that you can grab. So, and I know Perfect Bar is one of them and there's um, an RX bar I think is another one. So you can look into some stuff like that too that, doesn't take up as much space, especially if you're traveling with your kids. So that was my tip number two. What do you have for tip number two? Uh, My tip number two is drag someone else into it with you or at least be accountable to someone back home. So if you're really worried about it and you want to stay on it um, on your trip, you can, let's say you're traveling for work or something like that. You, if there are any of your coworkers that you know are also into working out, maybe you've talked one of your coworkers into joining street parking. Um, you could be like, hey, me, let's meet at the gym. Like, I'll go if you go type of thing. Um, I know that that helps our crew and we all travel together because I know there are people on our crew who would not work out if we weren't like, cool guys, we're meeting at the gym in 20 minutes. Um, and then if you're traveling alone or if there's no one in your group that's on that same page as you, um, maybe tell somebody back home or someone on our Facebook group and just be like, hey, I'm going on this trip. I want to stay on track. Nothing over the top, but I want to keep my workouts to keep my consistency. Can you please check in on me or hold me to it that I'm going to do something every day, even if it's just something in my hotel room that I'm going to do something. And it doesn't have to be every day. It could be if your goal is three days or whatever. But if you tell someone else to help you out with that, um, both of you are much more likely to be successful. Yes. Yes. Um, So that's my tip number two. Nice. And I think it helps with us. Like, you know, even on this trip, it's like, all right, let's just go down there and do it. And we both want to, but it's like, you wait kind of for the other person to bring it up sometimes. And eventually one of us is going to bring it up. And sometimes it's him and sometimes it's me, but we both know that that's the plan. And so, yeah. My trip, my tip for uh, traveling number three is going to be, if possible, try to stay at a place that has a kitchen Mm. available. I actually, that's my tip number four. Oh, nice. The reason I say this is because (laughs) a lot of the times people won't look for that based off of pricing alone, but we are not thinking about is the amount of money you'll end up spending on food Mm -hmm. eating out which that right there alone will cover the cost of let's just say you're traveling with five one night of eating out that's probably what you could have put in into getting a room upgrade that has a kitchen in to be honest so always look for those like townhome suites or something like that that has some kind of kitchen available so you can go to the supermarket when you land you can buy some stuff that you know you can easily prep um And that way you can set yourself up for success for your travel trip as well. And even being there, because I mean, I don't know about you, but I'm for sure I know about you actually. One or two days of eating out puts me in the worst position ever, you know, because unless you know the area that you're in and you know what restaurants to go look for, but most likely those restaurants, if you know the good restaurants are gonna cost money. The cleaner the restaurant, the more money it's gonna cost, bottom line. So. Anyway, that's my travel tip number three. Yeah, and I would say um, it depends on the type of trip. Again, like if you're on vacation and you're trying to like enjoy your vacation, we're not saying, you know, all right, family, like I made you the same shit that I make you at home. Happy vacation, you know. But 
you don't need to eat out for three meals a day. Like some sandwiches by the pool at lunch are totally fine. And it's going to be better than if you get pizza for the kids by the pool at lunch and then go out and get nachos and whatever else for dinner. Um, breakfast is usually uh, if we only have one meal in the hotel room, it's usually like our breakfast yeah. that we'll really enjoy making our eggs and everything and just throwing them in the fridge. I do know that I think, you can get even in hotels that not every room has a refrigerator they do have some if you tell them that you need it for medication or something like, like that yeah. yes they have those and they can bring one up to your room so don't think that you're like out of luck if you go to your hotel room and there's no refrigerator ask them to bring you one i mean sometimes they're all checked out depends on how busy the hotel is but they do have those they're required to have those for for people who need them for like medication and stuff. Yeah, and of course, even a microwave, things like that, or like uh, one of those- Hot plates. Hot they plates have, they as have well. those too, you can usually get. Yeah, I mean, they have those at what, uh, uh, Home Two Sweet. So a lot of places will have them. So just ask. Mm -hmm. um, my tip number three, so that was actually my tip number four also. But my tip number three was bookmark or plan or have some workouts some way written down that are going to be good options for you when you go so maybe um if you're a street parking member you can search the hashtag street parking travel and you're going to see a ton of workouts that are the, our most simple workouts many of which require no equipment at all um, pick a couple of those so that you're not like you know how it is you're like already laying down on the bed like the tv's on on the in the hotel room and you're like hmm i know i should probably go work out cool let me see what i'm going to do and you start scrolling and then you just get in too deep and can't make a decision and then you know you end up not going at all so if you pick a couple and have a couple options one for if the hotel actually has like dumbbells and a treadmill and stuff and a, another couple options for no equipment necessary you could do it on your balcony or there in your room and just have them ready to go that's your best bet for not wasting a bunch of time trying to figure out what you're going to do that's a great tip absolutely yep um, okay, so you already know my number four. What's your number four? My number four is uh, even when eating out, right? Or when, depending on the trip, right? Don't ever get sucked into the idea of, of a buffet, right? Ugh. So when it comes to, again, this is probably another eating one for sure. A lot of places, that's all they have for like breakfast and stuff like that. It is, and if they do trying to be as familiar as with your healthier food options as possible so if you are in a situation where you don't have access to a grocery store you don't have access to a fridge you at least know even if you have like those little continental breakfast they're gonna have oatmeal they're gonna have berries they're gonna have some kind of fruit so you can prep some kind of oats you can have your coffee and yeah of course like you know you just got to make do with what is available so the more you can understand what foods to eat um and again this is preparation beforehand as well luckily the sp templates have definitely helped out with a lot of this for a lot of our members for sure um so just being aware of menus and knowing what to order in situations where you do have to eat out all the time um i will say too just from when i started traveling a lot in 2008 to now the options that you can get at the airport and in hotels and everything are so much better because it used to be that those continental breakfasts, um, there were zero options for protein. And now what I've seen lately when we've been traveling is at least there's some like hard boiled eggs, yeah. which is great. Um, I don't think I've seen a place with just zero options, but going back to what you were saying before, um, one thing that I used to do with the progenic single serve packs, I used to do this at airports all the time is I would take um, a little almond butter pack and a progenic single serve pack and I would get the oatmeal from Starbucks and I would mix that all together. Oh, nice. And because um, at the airport, it's hard to find good protein. Mm -hmm. Also, it's like always so gross. Um, and that um, was delicious and it was balanced. And so, yeah, that's a that's an option you can do if you're stuck at like um, a continental breakfast type situation where they have zero protein options. Yeah. So that was my tip number four. Okay, what's your tip? So my tip number four was the kitchen. Nice. Or at least get snacks to have in your room. Yes. So you don't end up at the vending machine. What's your tip number five? Do you have one? I don't have a tip number five yet. <laughs> so I'll let you go ahead and kick off number five. Okay, so my tip number five 
is actually not when you're on vacation at all. It's or on your travel. Um, it's to be consistent and be on track and be feel good about where you're at before you go for multiple reasons. One, if you've been killing it and you've been seeing really good results, you're far less likely to want to fall off that train because you're going to be motivated. Um, the other thing is if you do fall off, like you and I have both said, like we can only eat out so many meals before we actually start craving the foods that our body is used to and likes yeah, and it is cleaner. Um, and then when we do, I mean, we like that one night we put in my story that we ordered like churros and dessert and everything. I didn't feel bad about it. Did you feel bad about it? Not at all. No, not at all. Because we don't, it's not a constant. We don't do it all the time. So we were actually able to enjoy it and not feel guilty. And we, we had dessert three times, actually. We shared. Yeah, we did. Twice. And that was very small. And then we did the whole like big dessert night and mm -hmm. now we're home and it's not something that we're going to continue to do and we enjoyed it but that's only because we were so consistent before that we weren't worried about it as much on the trip yeah absolutely so just live your life better before you go yeah. i guess is my tip it makes it easier for you to just come back and feel like you're in control of your eating habits absolutely you just come back and you just go yeah. right back to living life yeah, I drinking. Would, I will say neither one of us are big drinkers, yeah. so um, that's a whole different topic that we might have to bring in a special guest that knows more about that sort of thing that we do. Maybe Jaime. <laughs> yeah, maybe we can bring him in for sure. <laughs> um, I would say tip number five for me would be to um, get some audiobooks. Okay. <laughs> get some audiobooks on your travel trip. Learn something new. Um, because especially when you're traveling, you don't get that service unless you pay for the internet. And even if you pay for internet, it's the worst internet ever. The worst. You know, Kicks so, you out so much. I don't know. Get yourself a book that you're going to be interested in and learn something new. And if you're really worried about your fitness, maybe a book or a podcast or something like this one. Yeah. That excellent. will motivate you to be on it while you're there. Absolutely. So that you, um, the last thing that I'll say is that there's a big difference and we want you guys to understand in traveling for work and traveling for vacation and yeah. how you should approach that. If you travel for work all the time, a um, huge mistake that I see people make is they think that every time they're out of town, they're on vacation, yeah. but they travel for work like two to three times a month. You Two to three vacations a month where you're just like, oh yeah, when I'm out of town, I eat whatever I want. That's not gonna go well for you. Um, but on vacation, you also don't want to, your one vacation a year, or in our case, it would spend like three years. You don't want to be so rigid that you're not enjoying it and you can't relax. So enjoy the food, enjoy the, you know, peaceful times, do some simple workouts and don't work out with the intention of like, oh my gosh, I'm going to gain all this weight. If I don't, you will feel better. You'll have a better sleep and you'll f enjoy the vacation more if you move and sweat a little bit. Like that's the main reason that you should be doing it. Um, but yeah, make sure you really recognize, is this a vacation trip or is this a work trip or is this a, something that we do all the time visiting my family trip? That's yeah. also not really a vacation and it's I don't want to waste like no. eating a bunch of good food on that sort of a trip when it's like, yeah, we're there to visit my family, but it's not like our super downtime, chill time, like let mm -hmm. go. So be aware of that and be aware of your tendencies for that kind of stuff. Um, and if you're on vacation, just enjoy, enjoy it. Absolutely. We enjoyed ours. We definitely did. Had a really good time. All right. Those are our tips. Those are the tips. We hope you guys enjoyed this episode of the street parking podcast until next time. <laughs>